Hello everyone and welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. Let's take a look at this week's feature story, Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi and welcome. So tell me about Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, I'm Akshul Shah and I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I was one of the co-founders of Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Naman Kapoor and I'm currently a senior at Herrick's High School and I co-founded Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Namit Kapoor and I'm a sophomore at Herrick's High School and I co-founded Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Jacko Mineta and I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I was one of the co-founders of Herrick's Camp Connected. First off, how did you guys come up with this idea? Yeah, so um, originally Jackie Mineta had started the Highlander Buddy Program and uh, Namit Kapoor and Naman Kapoor had started Herrick Summer Helpers. So I kind of came in um, with an idea to kind of combine both of these programs because my suggestion uh, when I first spoke with Mr. Hodge about the idea was to create some sort of a, um, a virtual series of like YouTube videos or something to keep the kids engaged over the summer. And uh, Mr. Hodge referenced me to Jackie Mineta and Naman and Namath Kapoor. And together we, we, we thought of the idea of Herrick's Camp Connected, a virtual summer camp that would encompass all of our, all of our ideas into one. How long have you known each other? Um, so Jackie Mineta co uh, founded the Herrick's Buddy Program, and my brother and I founded Herrick's Summer Helpers, and Akshul Shah came in and collaborated with all of us to create Herrick's Camp Connect. What were your roles in putting this all together? So our roles in putting this all together um, were pretty similar. And although we all have different, like, similar, like, different niches where, like, Akshul was good at finding art activities and I was, like, good at organizing and outreach, um, we did do similar, like, work together and we all FaceTimed every night and found activities to put into the schedule. So it was really cool to be able to collaborate. How did the community respond to this idea? We had an overwhelmingly supportive response from the community because a lot of students and parents um, were involved with the camp and joined, and they were really happy that their kids had a place to kind of come together during the summer, even though there was a pandemic happening. So we were really grateful to have the support of the community. What sort of activities did you offer the students? So we, um, we offered a, um, a plethora of activities, including academics, athletics, games, um, music, and even some miscellaneous events, such as uh, we had a, mu a movie night one day, um, for example, for games, we had a Jeopardy, we had a Jeopardy game set up for the kids. We had, um, for arts, we did various crafts from making, um, instruments from, ad from like home items to straws and like toilet paper rolls. Um, and we even did some more advanced crafts such as creating 3D cards for healthcare workers, which was essential during this time. What were their age ranges? So the students that participated in our camp ranged from kindergarten to fifth grade. And we divided them all into sections from kindergarten to first grade, second grade to third grade, and fourth grade to fifth grade. And we would ma make sure to choose activities that were appropriate for them, such as uh, spelling bees. You know, we can't have fifth grade level words for kindergartners and vice versa. Was it easy to make the connections with the kids? Making connections with the kids was really amazing. And it was, I remember that the students in two to three, which was, the Zoom meetings that I started, they started to talk to me over like a few weeks and they asked me about my weekend plans, my dog, anything else that came to mind. And it was really amazing to be able to facilitate relationships with them as well. Have you maintained any of these connections? Um, I've been in touch with a lot of the volunteers who have joined our camp and they're really excited for what the future holds of Herrick's Camp Connected, but many of the students who are in elementary school's parents have continued to reach out to us and thank us for the starting this program. I've maintained relationships with many of the volunteers and we, I've gotten to know them better through um, them volunteering with us and engaging with the children. And also it was amazing to find that the children um, maintained friendships of their own with the other children in the camp and they told me that they would have play dates after the camp at like four o'clock after it ended and it was really amazing to find that they also had friendships with each other and that our camp was able to provide them. Where do you see this going in the future? In the future uh, I believe that this camp we can exp we can expand to not only serving um, 
our community, but also neighboring communities, as well as underprivileged commu communities that may not have the economic means to, um, to send their children to a summer camp due to their um, often hefty uh, um, costs that are associated with them. However, having um, a virtual summer camp that was free of cost would be really would be a really great opportunity for those kids because um, although their parents won't be um, won't wouldn't be able to afford a typical summer camp, a virtual summer camp would still give them that so that engaging and um, engaging and educational summer opportunity. What are your plans for the future? Um, I hope to transfer this camp in person. Um, instead of doing it virtually via Zoom because we have more safety precautions and are able to properly maintain um, social distancing rules. Um, in the future, I plan to be a physician and I feel like the leadership skills, communication skills that I've learned from this camp can really be applicable to that, uh, the medical setting, um, such as interacting with patients and leading the medical team in a hospital setting. So in the future, I, want to, I personally want to go into business and the business field is all about making connections with people. So this, uh, so creating Camp Connected would be a great was a great way for me to um, begin in my pursuits with those engagements with the community. And I can easily transfer many of the many of the lessons I learned through by by creating Camp Connected um, into my future endeavors in business. So I don't really know my plans for the future yet, but many of the skills that I've obtained from running this camp, including organization and outreach will serve to be useful for all four of us. And it was really amazing to gain the experiences that we were able to do by running this camp. Wow, that is really amazing that you all worked together to make such a huge impact during this very difficult time for our community. Thank you all. So that is it for this time on Herrick Student Spotlight. I am Jenna Novella, see you next time, and don't forget, you can make a difference. Hello everyone and welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out beyond our school community to make a difference. I am Jenna Novella and I have the privilege to host this segment where we are highlighting the extraordinary efforts of ordinary students. Let's take a look at this week's feature story, The Book Hunter. Hi and welcome. So tell me about The Book Hunter. First off, Hi, my name is Kyle Hunter. I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I'm the founder of The Book Hunters. How did you come up with this idea? Uh, I came up with this idea because I've been working with the Book Fairies, a nonprofit that donates books to kids all across the tri-state area. And during the pandemic, many kids weren't given access to books because of, of touching and, and the coronavirus. So we decided to host contactless book drives in which we would collect books from kids all across the district and then donate to the Book Fairies so they can give them to these kids. It started with contacting the book fairies to make sure that they wanted to be involved with this, and they were all for it. And then I contacted Ms. Keegan to see if, they would, if she would allow me to post on the Facebook page to spread awareness about this book drive, and she was in full support. So after this, I posted on the Herrick's Facebook page, and uh, many people contacted me to reach out to see if they could drop off books. How did the community respond to this idea? Uh, the community loved the idea because during the pandemic, uh, spring cleaning was obviously in effect and everyone was getting rid of stuff. So when people were cleaning up their closets, they were finding books to get rid of and books they didn't need. And since every child deserves a story to read, it was clearly obvious that everyone loved it. What sort of books did you offer the students? Um, we offered any books the students wanted. Any book we can get our hands on, we offered for the students because every child needs a book and every child needs to learn to read because it's crucial in our world. What were the age ranges of the books? Um, any, any age range of books we could really grab was something, was really any book we could give them because um, any child could read any book they want to. They don't, have a, they don't need a certain book that fits their age range. If they can read ahead, that would be great. So. Was it easy to make the connections with the people you reached out to? Um, it was easy to make connections with the people we, we reached out to because everyone had the same mission of providing every kid with a story and a book to read. So 
reaching out to them and them contacting us, everyone was under the same impression of helping kids. Have you maintained any of these connections? Um, I still maintain some of the connections that I've met, with, that, I've, that I've had with the people in my book drive journey. And I've reached out to many teachers that, and still contact with them this, to this day about the book drives and if they need any books that we can provide them. Where do you see this going in the future? Um, I hope to continue to spread awareness about the battle with literacy because it really is something that is terrible in our world. 15% of our country can't even read a simple sentence. So it's really important that we spread this, that we spread awareness about this and continue to help people who can't read. What are your plans for the future? Uh, my plans for the future are definitely to spread awareness about the book hunters and hope to spread uh, positivity and help each kid deserve have a proper reading experience. Wow, how great that students here at Herricks are reaching out to help our community. Until next time, remember, you can make a difference. Hello everyone and welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. Let's take a look at this week's feature story. Hi and welcome. So, tell me a little about yourself. First off... Hi, my name is Christina Karanikolas and I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I'm one of the co-founders of Helping the Healers. Hi, my name is Michaela Isinger. I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I'm a co-founder of Helping the Healers. Hi, my name's Kyle Hunter. I'm a senior at Herricks High School, and I'm a co-founder of Helping the Healers. How did you guys come up with this idea? We came up with this idea because some of our parents are healthcare workers, and we saw some of the problems that they were facing on the front lines. How long have you known each other? We've known each other since kindergarten, so we've been together for a pretty long time. What were your roles in putting this all together? Our roles in putting this together were... We, were, we started with a GoFundMe, and then we raised over $2,000, and with that money, we were able to uh, contact local restaurants in order to provide the, for them to send meals to the hospitals. How did the community respond to this idea? The community was very willing to help because everyone was going through the pandemic together, and any way that they could help the frontline healthcare workers was more than enough. Was it easy to make the connections with the community? It was easy to make connections with the community just because everyone was fighting for the same cause and we believe that um, if we all come together, we'll be able to f help these frontline healthcare workers. Have you maintained any of these connections? We maintain a lot of these connections because my parents are both healthcare workers and communicating with their coworkers helped, has helped us a lot with receiving a lot of feedback. Where do you see this going in the future? In the future, we hope to continue raising and donating more and maybe donating whatever we have left over after sending food to the rest of the hospitals. Has this experience changed you in any way? This experience has changed us as uh, we've been able to see how these frontline healthcare workers have struggled through our eyes and it's really opened the eyes for us in our journey. How would you like people to respond to what you have done? We would like the people to respond by also starting funds, maybe helping other people also, because everybody can pitch in to do something. Wow, how amazing to see so many students getting involved with the Herricks community to make such a positive impact. Until next time, I am Jenna Novella, and remember, you can make a difference. Hello everyone and welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. Let's take a look at this week's feature story. Hi, my name is Aiden Matthews. I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I co-organize a GoFundMe that helps children who lost a parent to the coronavirus. Hi and welcome. So, tell me a little about yourself. First off, how did you guys come up with this idea? So it was actually my mom's coworker, Amanda Sulman, at a local hospital that brought the idea to us. Um, she told us about it, and I knew I wanted to get involved and just take it to the next level. What were your roles in putting this all together? Uh, so first off, we had to find families who lost a loved one to the virus. So she was able to find two families, and I found through uh, one of my family friends, actually, 
um, she got us in contact with a social worker at another school, and she knew of two other families who lost a parent. So I got in touch with them, and then through one of my um, church members, she was able to get us in touch with a 17-year-old boy who lost his mom. How did the community respond to this idea? So at first it was a little challenging to reach out to the community, but I knew with the support of my uh, family and friends, and especially through the Herx community, that we could uh, just, again, take it to the next level and just step it up. Have you maintained any of these connections? Um, so I do talk to some of the um, family still. I try to reach out. It's a little, everyone's a little busy. I know it's hard supporting a family, so um, it takes a while to, for them to respond to you sometimes, but I try to keep in touch, ask them if they need any help with like schoolwork for their children and uh, stuff like that. What are your plans for the future? Um, so I want to pursue a career in the medical field. I'm very devoted on becoming a physician, uh, so I'm trying to go to college for that and um, yep. Where do you see this going in the future? Uh, so I feel like um, what we did was a huge success. So I definitely want to try and do something similar like this um, in the future. But of course, it's a little busy. So maybe just um, you know collaborate with more people or talk to other organizations who uh, are doing similar things. Has this experience changed you in any way? Uh, yeah, this experience has really changed me a lot. Um, I progressed as a human being. I became more social, more outgoing, and uh, I realized um, my full potential. How would you like people to respond to what you have done? Um, so I just want uh, people to know that this is possible. Um, you know, I'm just, a, I'm just a senior, so pretty much any, anyone can do this if they have the right determination and uh, passion to help others. Wow, how amazing to see so many students getting involved with the Herricks community to make such a positive impact. So I want like one big takeaway to be that um, pretty much everyone can do this. I know sometimes we all get caught up in our busy lives and it's kind of um, like a far out like goal to help others and stuff, but it's not so hard that you can't do it. So I just want people to be inspired because especially if I was in their shoes and in their situation, I know my life would be turned upside down. So I know that I just want to help them and be there for them. Until next time, I am Jenna Novella and remember, you can make a difference.
Hello everyone and welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. Let's take a look at this week's feature story, Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi and welcome. So tell me about Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, I'm Akshul Shah and I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I was one of the co-founders of Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Naman Kapoor and I'm currently a senior at Herrick's High School and I co-founded Herrick's Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Namit Kapoor and I'm a sophomore at Herricks High School and I co-founded Herricks Camp Connected. Hi, my name is Jacko Mineta and I'm a senior at Herricks High School and I was one of the co-founders of Herricks Camp Connected. First off, how did you guys come up with this idea? Yeah, so um, originally Jackie Mineta had started the Highlander Buddy Program and uh, Namit Kapoor and Naman Kapoor had started Herricks Summer Helpers. So I kind of came in... Um, with an idea to kind of combine both of these programs because my suggestion uh, when I first spoke with Mr. Hodge about the idea was to create some sort of a, um, a virtual series of like YouTube videos or something to keep the kids engaged over the summer. And uh, Mr. Hodge referenced me to Jackie Mineta and Naman and Namath Kapoor. And together we, we, we thought of the idea of Herrick's Camp Connected, a virtual summer camp that would encompass all of our, all of our ideas into one. How long have you known each other? Um, so Jackie Mineta co uh, founded the Herricks Buddy Program and my brother and I founded Herricks Summer Helpers and Akshil Shah came in and collaborated with all of us to create Herricks Camp Connect. What were your roles in putting this all together? So our roles in putting this all together um, were pretty similar. And although we all have different, like similar, like different niches, where like Akshil was good at finding art activities, and I was like good at organizing and outreach, um, we did do similar like work together, and we all FaceTimed every night and found activities to put into the schedule. So it was really cool to be able to collaborate. How did the community respond to this idea? We had an overwhelmingly supportive response from the community because a lot of students and parents. Um, were involved with the camp and joined, and they were really happy that their kids had a place to kind of come together during the summer, even though there was a pandemic happening. So we were really grateful to have the support of the community. What sort of activities did you offer the students? So we, um, we offered a, um, a plethora of activities, including academics, athletics, games, um, music, and even some miscellaneous events, such as uh, we had a, mu a movie night one day, um, for example, for games, we had a Jeopardy, we had a Jeopardy game set up for the kids. We had, um, for arts, we did various crafts from making, um, instruments from, at, from like home items to straws and like toilet paper rolls. Um, and we even did some more advanced crafts such as creating 3D cards for healthcare workers, which was essential during this time. What were their age ranges? So the students that participated in our camp ranged from kindergarten to fifth grade. And we divided them all into sections from kindergarten to first grade, second grade to third grade, and fourth grade to fifth grade. And we would ma make sure to choose activities that were appropriate for them, such as uh, spelling bees. You know, we can't have fifth grade level words for kindergartners and vice versa. Was it easy to make the connections with the kids? Making connections with the kids was really amazing. And it was, I remember that the students in two to three, which was, the Zoom meetings that I started, they started to talk to me over like a few weeks and they asked me about my weekend plans, my dog, anything else that came to mind. And it was really amazing to be able to facilitate relationships with them as well. Have you maintained any of these connections? Um, I've been in touch with a lot of the volunteers who have joined our camp and they're really excited for what the future holds of Herrick's Camp Connected. But many of the students who are in elementary school's parents have continued to reach out to us and thank us for the starting this program. I've maintained relationships with many of the volunteers and we, I've gotten to know them better through um, them volunteering with us and engaging with the children. And also it was amazing to find that the children um, maintained friendships of their own with the other children in the camp, and they told me that they would have play dates after the camp at like four o'clock after it ended, and it was really amazing to find that they also had friendships with each other, and that our camp was able to provide them. Where do you see this going in the future? In the future, uh, I believe that this camp, we can, exp we can expand to not only serving um, 
our community, but also neighboring communities, as well as underprivileged commu communities that may not have the economic means to, um, to send their children to a summer camp due to their um, often hefty uh, um, costs that are associated with them. However, having um, a virtual summer camp that was free of cost would be really would be a really great opportunity for those kids because um, although their parents won't be um, won't wouldn't be able to afford a typical summer camp, a virtual summer camp would still give them that so that engaging and um, engaging and educational summer opportunity. What are your plans for the future? Um, I hope to transfer this camp in person. Um, instead of doing it virtually via Zoom because we have more safety precautions and are able to properly maintain um, social distancing rules. Um, in the future, I plan to be a physician and I feel like the leadership skills, communication skills that I've learned from this camp can really be applicable to that, uh, the medical setting, um, such as interacting with patients and leading the medical team in a hospital setting. So in the future, I, want to, I personally want to go into business and the business field is all about making connections with people. So this, so creating Camp Connected would be a great was a great way for me to um, begin in my pursuits with those engagements with the community. And I can easily transfer many of the many of the lessons I learned through by by creating Camp Connected um, into my future endeavors in business. So I don't really know my plans for the future yet, but many of the skills that I've obtained from running this camp, including organization and outreach will serve to be useful for all four of us. And it was really amazing to gain the experiences that we were able to do by running this camp. Wow, that is really amazing that you all worked together to make such a huge impact during this very difficult time for our community. Thank you all. So that is it for this time on Herrick Student Spotlight. I am Jenna Novella, see you next time, and don't forget, you can make a difference. Welcome to Herrick Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herrick's High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. Let's take a look at this week's feature story. Hi and welcome. So, tell me a little about yourself. First off... Hi, I'm Michaela Isinger. I'm a senior at Herrick's High School and I'm an organizer of a smile drive. How did you come up with this idea? I came up with this idea after seeing many food drives take place in my community. I realized that people might be lacking dental hygiene products and paper goods, so I decided to collect donations and deliver them to Bethany Houses in Long, Long Island. What was your role in putting this all together? I put a box outside my house to collect donations, and after I received a good amount of donations, I delivered them to three different Bethany Houses. How did the community respond to this idea? My community responded very well to this idea because after I contacted them through the Herrick Strong Group, which is a group full of Herrick's community members who are willing to make a difference within our community, they responded very well. Was it easy to make connections with the community? It was easy to make connections within my community because during the pandemic, everyone was very willing to help out. Have you maintained any of these connections? I maintained a lot of connections within my community because after I delivered each donation to the Bethany House, I submitted a picture into the group and thanked the community members for their generosity. Where do you see this going in the future? In the future, I hope to maintain my connection with the Bethany House that I donated to and help them with whatever they may need. What are your plans for the future? In the future, I hope this encourages people to keep donating to Bethany Houses because they're always looking to donations to support their large number of women and children. Has this experience changed you in any way? This experience has allowed me to be more thankful for my home and my family. After seeing the many homeless women and children take shelter at the Bethany Houses, I've become more thankful for everything that I have, starting with my home. Wow, how amazing to see so many students getting involved with the Herricks community to make such a positive impact. Until next time, I am Jenna Novella, and remember, you can make a difference. Hello everyone and welcome to Herricks Student Spotlight, a show where we spotlight students here at Herricks High School who are reaching out to the community to make a difference. 
Let's take a look at this week's feature story. Hi and welcome. So, tell me a little about yourself. Hi, my name is Iman Malhi, and I go to Herricks High School, and I'm a current junior. Hi, my name is Sana Nabi, and I'm a junior from Herricks High School. Hi, I'm Samia Gondal. I'm in 11th grade, and I go to Herricks High School. First off, how did you guys come up with this idea? Our project is Project LLS, which is an abbreviation of Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We came up with this idea because we wanted something to give back to the community, and so Leukemia and Lymphoma Society recently came up with the Child Initiative, which sponsors more money for FDA-approved drugs for children, because there's not many out there, so we wanted to raise money and awareness for that. How long have you known each other? So I have known Samia for about six years now, and our other partner, Iman, has been uh, is Samia's cousin, so we all joined and decided to do this project together. What were your roles in putting this all together? So our roles as candidates of the Student of the Year campaign for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society included reaching out to the community and involving our friends, family, and community members to help us fundraise. We also reached out to various companies, both local and global, so that we could secure sponsorships and silent auction items. How did the community respond to this idea? The community was really supportive. Um, they were really proud of us because they wouldn't expect uh, kids so young to be doing such a great thing. Was it easy to make the connections with the community? Yes, it was really easy because we reached out to a lot of doctors and people who deal with this every single day. We try to make connections with healthcare uh, workers, and also I um, made a connection as well. Um, at the end, towards the end of this, we got um, signs outside, and my neighbor she actually came up to me and she saw the sign and she was she like started crying. She was like, "Oh my God, I thank you so much! Like you like raised money because she herself had leukemia." Have you maintained any of these connections? So. As the year concluded in the spring, we have maintained some of these connections because a lot of my teachers and a lot of my family members have known what this benefit, what the benefit of our fundraiser was. So we've maintained these connections by keeping in touch with them and also keeping in touch with some of the companies. Where do you see this going in the future? I see this going in the future where I'm going to do more events like this and like do more fundraising because I feel like um, helping out is something that's like not that challenging. It is challenging, but like anyone can do it. And it's like it's like really helps in the end. Like it raises like a lot of awareness for things. I also see this going where like um, in a career in medicine as well, because like I want to do something also that helps people out in the future. What are your plans for the future? Well, I learned so much about different blood cancers, and I'm, it made me really passionate about oncology, and I would like to go into oncology in the future. As I said before, I am very passionate about um, on, uh, like different blood cancers, so I would like to go into oncology. Has this experience changed you in any way? This experience has changed me in a great way because I feel as if my confidence level has grown and I've become more confident in everything that I do and my communication skills have definitely improved as well as my marketing skills because we had to reach out to so many various companies and different, fill out different auction forms and sponsorship forms so it has definitely helped me grow in that aspect. How would you like people to respond to what you have done? I would like uh, for people to really appreciate what I've done because we together as a team raised so much money uh, because of our passion. Wow, how amazing to see so many students getting involved with the Herricks community to make such a positive impact. Thank you. Until next time, I am Jenna Novella and remember, you can make a difference.